in general, one of the hurdles I would say for、uh, global investors to invest or understand Chinese companies would be on the government side. I classify that as kind of a I call that information asymmetrical barrier. Welcome to Boardroom and Beyond podcast, a show dedicated to exploring corporate governance best practice. This podcast is a learning journey, taking us to different part of the world to discover profound and eye-opening differences in corporate governance, understand those differences, and learn how to unlock the mystery of doing business wherever we go. I'm your host, Lisi Zhang. I hope you will enjoy the journey with me. Happy New Year, everyone! As a New Year special, we are releasing two episodes today regarding China corporate governance. As we all know, institutional investors are the ultimate driver of corporate governance development. I'm delighted to share my conversation with the honorable guest Vivian Lin, partner of. William Blair, a prestige investment banking and asset management firm based in Chicago, Vivian is in charge of William Blair's China Asia Growth Strategy. In this first episode, Vivian will review pros and cons of China state-owned entities' corporate governance and how she selects investment opportunities in China market. Hello, Vivian. Thank you so much for making the time today. Welcome to Boardroom and Beyond Podcast. I'm so happy we have this conversation today. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you for inviting me to、uh, this interesting topic and do the podcast with you. First, before we start the conversation, I want to make a, a disclaimer statement. The conversation today is a the personal. My understanding is a personal opinion from you, and this doesn't represent you know anything from、uh, William Blair. Because I understand that you are a partner for、uh, William Blair, and、uh, with your job, you're responsible for China Asia、uh, strategy. Because China right now is the second largest economy, but also as one of the emerging market, corporate governance in China is in the developing stages. So I'm wondering, for emerging market like China, how do you weigh the financial return, earning growth versus corporate governance maturity level and、uh, ESG performance? When you do the selection, thank you for kind of introducing my background as well, my current position. So I am a co-portfolio manager of our China Asia strategy,、um, and then in the last three years since we we had the strategy、uh, launched、uh, the end of 2017.、Um, but prior to that, I spent、um, as of now 20 years、uh, my time, my career in following global consumer companies, including Chinese companies. So my interaction and investment experience with Chinese companies actually predated my current、uh, position in directly investing into Chinese domestic markets. So that gave me a lot of、uh, understanding and、um, kind of insights into how we think about corporate governance when investing into Chinese companies, regardless of where they are listed, whether in domestic market we call China A, or in Hong Kong stock exchange we call China A shares, or the U.S. market we call ADRs, right? Um, so, in general, one of the、uh, hurdles I would say for、uh, global investors、uh, to invest or understand Chinese companies actually would be on the governing government side, and I I, I classify that as kind of a I call that information asymmetrical barrier. Whether it's because a language barrier, whether it's because cultural barriers, or the or the system difference barrier. Or、um, different accounting standards or disclosure、uh, requirement barrier. All those differences all constitute into this. I would say sometimes lack of、uh, comfort、uh, of global investors when they invest into China. So therefore, corporate governance become even bigger kind of uh, uh, I would say factor for us to look at、uh, when we invest into China. And this also. Rightfully so, even without all the barriers or differences I mentioned just now, because China is still in the relatively early phase of the capitalism development or market economy development. A lot of companies were just founded 20 years ago, 10 years ago, some of them even five, six years ago. But they grow so fast and so much, and then become a very big company on the global domain. To listen to the rest of this episode, 
please check our website in the description section below this video. And please subscribe Boardroom and Beyond YouTube channel so you will not miss any future episodes. Thank you for listening.